Hi, this is Richard Hicks, founder and principal consultant at Richard M. Hicks Consulting, where we specialize in enterprise mobility and security infrastructure. We provide consulting services for secure remote access and public key infrastructure projects. In this video, I want to talk about Always On VPN Client Configuration Management. If you're familiar at all with Always On VPN, you'll know it's a workload that's designed to be managed using Microsoft Endpoint Manager or Intune. But there are other alternatives as well. For example, you could use System Center Configuration Manager or SCCM. Using SCCM, you would create a PowerShell script and an XML configuration file, and you would package that and deliver it to your endpoints accordingly. Finally, you could just use PowerShell natively to install an XML configuration file locally. But what about Active Directory and Group Policy? Well, unfortunately, there's no native capabilities that support that in Windows. The only option available to administrators is to use the PowerShell script and XML configuration file and deploy that as a startup script using Active Directory Group Policy. This is challenging because it does require the administrator to understand XML and, and create the XML configuration file. It also makes it difficult to manage and support because making changes after the deployment becomes challenging. You have to decide what changes need to be made, uh, how to make those changes, what profiles are effective. Also, disconnecting an active VPN connection is not exactly trivial as well. So there's a number of problems and limitations associated with managing always on VPN profiles using the PowerShell script and startup script method. To address these challenges and limitations, the folks at Power On Platforms have introduced the Always On VPN Dynamic Profile Configurator, or DPC for short. Always On VPN DPC allows administrators to manage Always On VPN client configuration settings using native Active Directory group policy for both device tunnel and user tunnel connections. Always On VPN DPC provides administrators with some distinct advantages. DPC makes it much easier to deploy Always On VPN and does not require an XML configuration file. Always On VPN DPC ensures consistent, always up-to-date endpoint configuration that's aligned with current implementation best practices. Always On VPN DPC also includes advanced capabilities and exposes important configuration settings not available natively in Microsoft Endpoint Manager Intune or even in XML. I'll be demonstrating those in a later video, so stay tuned for more information. Always On VPN DPC consists of two components. First, Group policy templates are provided which must be uploaded to a domain controller. Also, client software must be deployed to all managed endpoints. So let's take a look at Always On VPN DPC in action. So here we are in a management workstation in my lab network. And the first thing that we need to do is extract the group policy template files from the installer. So we've downloaded the installer from Power On Platforms. And I like to do this at the command line. You could always just run the installer and then grab the ADMX and ADML files out of the program files folder for the software. But I prefer, again, to do this at the command line. So I'm going to navigate to the desktop. And then I'm going to run the following command. So this is the msiexec.exe command. And this command essentially extracts all of the files that are included in the MSI file to a specific folder. So once that's done, we'll open up this folder and we'll navigate to the Power On Platforms and the Dynamic Profile Configurator folder, and we're going to go to the ADMX folder. And here are our Active Directory Group Policy template files. So I'm going to open another File Explorer window here. And I'm going to navigate to the SysVol folder on my domain controller. And I'm going to dive into the Policies folder, and the Policy Definitions folder is where we're going to copy these two. So I'm going to copy the ADMX file to the Policy Definitions folder on my domain controller. And then I'm going to go to the Language folder here, and I'm going to install this ADML file there as well. So that's it. Now we can open up the Group Policy Management Console and create a new GPO. So we'll give it a descriptive name. And once that's created, then we'll just edit that.
And now we'll expand Computer Configuration, Policies, Administrative Templates. And if everything goes according to plan, we should see an AOVPN Dynamic Profile Configurator Client node. So let's highlight that. And we're going to do the basic configuration for both a device tunnel and a user tunnel. We'll go over some advanced configuration settings in another video. But to begin, we need to provide our product key. So we'll start there. So double click on that, click enabled and enter the product key that you received from Power On Platforms. By the way, if you haven't purchased the product already and you want to give it a shot, uh, give it a road test, you can uh, contact the folks at Power On. They'll provide you with a trial key that's uh, fully functional, I believe, for 30 days. Next, we'll select the option to enable the device tunnel itself. So we'll click Enabled there and do the same thing for the user tunnel. Now let's dive into configuring each of those tunnels. Let's go to the device tunnel settings here and you'll see there's a bunch of required and optional settings. So we're going to set a few of these. We're going to obviously have to set all the required ones. So let's do that. So here's our VPN endpoint. This is the public host name of your VPN server. And we need to supply our DNS suffix search list, of course. If you have more than one, you can enter that there as well. We need to specify the connection name, of course. This is how it appears in Windows, by the way. Since this is a device tunnel, I'm going to choose the option to register in DNS and I need to define my routes for the device tunnel, of course. And since this is a device tunnel, I'm going to specify a host route to my domain controller. The only required value here is the value name. If you want to enter something here, you can enter a descriptive name for what this particular value is. In this case, it's my domain controller, so I'll add that here. And then finally, I'm going to add my trusted network detection value. So that's it for the basic settings for the device tunnel. Let's go over to the user tunnel. So we're going to add our VPN endpoint again here. Specify our DNS suffix search list. We're going to enter our trusted issuing certificates. This is required for our protected EEP or PEEP authentication settings. So the value here is a certificate thumbprint for the issuing CA servers that will be issuing certificates to our users for user authentication. And you can enter multiple values here. I only have one issuing CA in my lab, so I'm going to enter that here. So I'm going to do that by looking in the certificate stores using PowerShell. And here you can see my root CAs and issuing CA certificates are in this particular store. So I'm going to grab the thumbprint for my issuing CA, and this is the one that's issuing certificates for user authentication in my lab. So I'm going to copy that and paste that value here. And again, if you have more than one issuing CA, you're more than welcome to put uh, additional uh, entries here. Also, if you have a single tier CA, you're issuing right from the root, then this value would be your root CA certificate thumbprint. So we'll enter our radius servers. This is again for the EAP configuration. And I only have a single radius server name in my environment. It's actually behind a load balancer. So there are more than one, but principally that name is the only one that we use. So I'm going to click OK. If you have other NPS servers, then you can certainly add those additionally here. We need to specify the connection name. Again, this is how it appears in Windows. 
and we don't want to register in DNS because this is a user tunnel and we've already done that on the device tunnel. And then we also need to provide our trusted root certificate. And again, I'm going to get that information from the PowerShell. So here is my root CA certificate thumbprint. We need to define our routes. And since this is a user tunnel, we're going to add a more broad route than just a host route like we did for the device tunnel. So here I'm going to add my entire internal network. And again, if you have additional networks you want to route, you can add those subsequently here. And then finally, I'm going to add my trusted network detection. And that's it for the basic configuration of the user and device tunnel GPO. Let's go assign that GPO to a OU. And I have an OU here already set up for testing. So I'm going to go ahead and link my GPO to that OU. And that's it. We're done on the infrastructure side. Now let's jump over to the client. So here we are on our Windows client. And again, we've copied the software over here to the desktop. Now, normally you would deploy this software using your software deployment solution of choice, but here we're just gonna run through the installation manually really quick for testing. So I'm gonna double click on the DPC software, click next, accept the EULA, next again. Here's the uh, folder where it's gonna be installed. I'm gonna choose the default, choose next, and then install. And literally, that's about it. That's it. So we're done. <laughs> so we'll click Finish. And at this point, we should be able to update group policy and find these connections already deployed. So after we've updated group policy, let's make sure the service is running on the always on VPN DPC. And if it's not, you can go ahead and start it. Now let's take a look and see if our settings have shown up. And there you have it. We have our device tunnel and our user tunnel connections. And if we took this machine outside and had all of our settings configured correctly, we would have always on VPN installed, configured, running, and managed fully using Active Directory and Group Policy. So as you can see, Always On VPN DPC greatly improves the administrative experience for deploying Always On VPN using Active Directory and Group Policy. Using DPC, clients are configured optimally and consistently, and they're always up to date. To learn more about Power On Platform's Always On VPN DPC, visit richardhicks.com slash AOVPN DPC. And of course, if you'd like to learn more about Always On VPN in general, as well as other mobility and security solutions, please visit my website at directaccess.richardhicks.com.